praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasure forevermore. It is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible said the Lord is gone up with a shout. So go ahead and give him a clap of, of victory. A shout of victory. Whether the devil likes it or not. In the day the Lord has made. You shall rejoice and be glad. The spirit of depression cannot attack you. The spirit of discouragement cannot attack you. The spirit of delay cannot attack you. Defeat is not your portion. Failure is not your portion. On Mount Zion there is deliverance. There is holiness. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Go ahead and give him a clap. And give him the shot of victory. Best place to be is the presence of the Lord, and you are welcome to that presence now. Give him a bigger clap of hand as you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody excited here this morning? I will bring you greetings from Chicago. It has to be completed. <laughs> And we saw a great move of God. The whole of North America, South America, Latin America is ready for fire invasion. It's explosive. I'm sure they will show us the cape at the right time. Somebody excited again, say a loud amen. Excited again, say the loudest amen. You believe there's something in here for you this morning? Say the loudest, amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 22 and in verse 29. He said, Seest thou a man who is diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean or ordinary men. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. The subject is the profitability of excellence. The profitability of excellence. And our objective this morning is just like the topic or the title Understanding what it profits to be excellent. What it profits to function in excellence. On Wednesday, we looked at the adventure of excellence. And we saw that excellence is an adventure, not a destination. The meaning is, you don't arrive where excellence is concerned. You keep going. You keep going. And we saw seven factors that would facilitate our adventure in excellence. That was the decision for excellence, association with the excellence. Attention to details. Intolerance of mediocrity. The continuity of improvement. Value for knowledge. And the diligence of labor. Very intense message on Wednesday. If you were not there, please pick up that message. And let it do something to your life. Going further today. What is excellence all about? Even as we attempt to look at the profitability of excellence. Excellence is about first. Being the very best. 
you can be and doing the very best you can do in every facet of life. Being the very best you can be. Doing the very best you can do in every facet of life. In my career, my academic work, in my calling, is this the very best I can be? Is this the very best I can do? That is what excellence is about. We'll look at the next in the second service. Being the very best you can be, doing the very best you can do. If you are able to ask yourself that question, is this my very best? Is this the very best I can do? Then you are face to face confronting the issues of excellence. What is the profitability of excellence? We are going to look at three things in the service this morning. We are going to look at one per service. One, first, excellence brings opportunity. Brings opportunity. Quality brings opportunity. Seest thou a man that is diligent in his business? Do you see a man who excels in all he does? He will be given the opportunity to stand in palaces of power. He will not fraternize with ordinary people. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 said, The gift of a man maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Somebody is going before greatness. If you are that one, say aloud, Amen. Are there examples in scripture of people that got opportunity by excellence? First, Joseph. You know the story of Joseph. The gift of Joseph, the excellence of Joseph, gave him the opportunity of standing before Pharaoh and offering generational solution to Egypt. The gift, the excellence of Joseph. He gave him an opportunity that nothing else could have given him. In Genesis chapter 41, after the magicians of Egypt and all of the people couldn't offer what Joseph could offer, Joseph was brought before Pharaoh. From the prison to the palace. Genesis chapter 41, verse 14. He shaved himself. And then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself. And changed his raiment. And came in unto Pharaoh. He shaved himself. That is, he was in a position where nothing could have brought him close to Pharaoh. Rough prisoner, rough bear, dirty, stinky prison clothes. But he excelled in a realm, and that excellence gave him a platform to meet with whom his boss in the prison couldn't have met. That was. Joseph, who got the opportunity of meeting Pharaoh. Second, David. The gift of David gave him the opportunity of standing before and ministering to King Saul. The gift, the excellence of David. 
In First Samuel chapter 16 and in verse 17. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty, valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. And they sent and brought him, and he stood before Saul. As good as prayer is, it was not prayer that opened the door of the palace to David. As good as fasting is, it was not fasting that opened the door of the palace to David. As good as worship was, well, partly worship. There are things spirituality will do for you. But there are things quality will do that only spirituality couldn't do. Did you hear what I said? You heard it very well. That is, you have high spirituality plus high mediocrity. Then you have limited destiny. You can pray. You can fast. You can study the Bible. But you don't do it well. You don't know how to do anything well. You are almost and literally a generational liability. Everything they ask you to do, you, do, you did them poorly. That is a destiny limited. God is saying, I would like to help you, but you have limited me with the quality you present. I would love to change your story. I would love to place you on top in your wall. But you have limited me. It wasn't fasting that took David to the palace. It was excellence. Example number three is the example of Daniel. The gift of Daniel gave him the opportunity to minister before all the kings that lived in his time. All the kings, all the kings. The gift of David, of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 5, Daniel was so excellent that his news spread. In verse 11, he said, There is a man in your kingdom, the spirit of the Holy Ghost. They were trying to describe the God of heaven and they didn't know who he was. And in the days of your father, this man had light. He had understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods. They didn't know what to, to, to describe. It was found in him. And the king Nebuchadnezzar, your father, the king, your, the king, I say, your father, made him the master of the magicians. That is, anybody who was a spiritualist or had anything to do with spirituality or spiritualism, Daniel was in charge of them because he did it more than them. Head of astrologers, head of Chaldeans, the head of soothsayers. Keep going. For as much as an excellent spirit, he excelled. And knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, showing hard sentences, dissolving of doubts. They were found in this same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. There was Daniel brought in before the king. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, Are you that Daniel? That Daniel. That particular Daniel I've been hearing about. Which are of the children of the captivity whom the king my father brought out of the jury. Are you that Daniel? You come to the point where they say, Are you that doctor? Are you that lawyer? Are you that consultant? I've heard of you. Am I communicating at all? Are you that Daniel? Daniel became notorious for good by virtue of the display of excellence. All of you herbalists, all of you native doctors, all of you do your 
practice. This man is higher than all of you. He can see more than you. He can hear more than you. He can decree to come to pass. That was how Daniel was. Very, very shortly, there is someone seated here. In your community and in your generation, they will refer to you as that person, that lawyer, that doctor, that consultant. If you are that one, your amen would have been loudest. If you are that one, your amen would have been loudest. If you are that one, you will shout the loud most. Amen. Is God speaking to somebody at all? If you go through life, we have plenty examples where excellence brought opportunity. You know that there are various scholarships that are awarded at various levels where people write the exams to qualify for scholarships, certain scholarships. And the opportunity of these scholarships are offered to the most excellent, excellent. My wife and I, in our Destiny Christian Academy school here, we have a, special, it's, it's a personal scholarship, not from the church, but from us, of the most outstanding student in the junior secondary school who, who excelled. We will pay your school fees this coming session, don't, or this coming this session or term. We'll pay your net school fees. Don't, you don't need to pay. We, we did a graduation not too long ago, and um, one of the students uh, who, who, who excelled, the father could pay, the parent could pay, but we had committed. Because he excelled, he got the opportunity. Opportunity. You know, sometime I was um, made a member of the Board of Regents of the Covenant University, and then during one of the graduations, I observed something. The outstanding students, and uh, you know, in, in our own days of in university, it's like one person will get a first class in a whole university, and that is news, or two at the most. In this place, like um, thirty something people with first class from one department, like uh, from one faculty, like um, and so on. Now, on the graduation, he said, the chancellor would like to shake hands with all the students that are graduates. Just give them a handshake, congratulations, and release them into the world to go and succeed. But because of the number of people, he would like to shake the first class graduates on the behalf of the rest. Hello? That is a life-changing destiny impartation from such a massive vessel. I mean, a generational mantle carrier said, I want to shake you before you hit the wall. But you are all so many, so let me shake the first class people on your behalf. Is impartation received on behalf of others? Except if the person who received the handshake will come and shake me after he received it. But that wasn't done. So I am receiving this impartation on the frequency of distinction. Those are the kind of things we are talking about. There are doors that open naturally. Because you excel. In some of the countries of Europe and other places like that, there is a visa they call highly exceptional and skilled worker visa. Skilled and exceptional. That is, this guy is outstanding in his field. Come and live in our country. While they are bouncing others, we need you. We need what you do. One of our guys testified on Wednesday midweek service. A neurosurgeon. I hope he came in for the first service. Maybe he'll be here for the second service. 
That is, you, you need visa, we suspect you. You are coming here to be a problem. You, please, come and live in our country. We need your skill. We need your excellence. We need your brain. That is naturally. Naturally. Now, I am saying that, and I am not saying that living anywhere in the world has an advantage to another place. It's a matter of where God wants you to be. If God wants you to be in Nigeria, the best place for you is Nigeria. If you carry me to any part of the world, there is nothing that you will give to me that will make me stay there except we travel to America on, on Thursday. We left here on Wednesday. Arrived here on Thursday. Returned from there on Friday. Arrived here on Saturday to be in church on Sunday. And I'm very normal. When we stepped this, when we stepped around here yesterday, I said there's nowhere like home. Nowhere. And there are those who will die to live anywhere in the world. If God placed you there, why not? But green card does not mean green light. So just just it's just a matter of where God wants you to be. Am I communicating at all? So so in case you are exceptional and you are skilled, even if God does not want you to go out, opportunity to go out does not necessarily mean go. Is there a balance in what I'm saying? But the truth is, the opportunity exists. There are people here today, God is about to open something for you that will shock you and amaze those who know you. You believe and shout the loudest, Amen. Shout the loudest, Amen. Shout, Amen, at the top of your voice. Listen to this as I round off on this point. Excellence will bring opportunity. But what you do with the opportunity is what will determine your impact in life. It will bring opportunity. Joseph excelled. And that excellence brought him the opportunity to meet with Pharaoh. But meeting with Pharaoh was the means to an end. It wasn't an end. What you do with opportunity determines what the future will do with you. It will bring opportunity. What you do with the opportunities will determine how useful you might be in the hands of God. He brought Joseph opportunity, the opportunity to meet with Pharaoh. If Joseph had mismanaged that opportunity, he would have returned back to the prison. And this is where I want the message to really be. You produce excellence. Excellence brings you opportunity. What will you do with opportunity? Three things. And I close. There are many, many things you can do with the opportunity God brings your way. The opportunity that the excellence will bring your way. If you do it well and live well, what will you do with opportunity? Number one, opportunity is to be used to offer generational solutions. Offer generational answers and solutions. You use the opportunity to make a mark that cannot be erased. You use the opportunity to make the mark that can't be erased. You use the opportunity to offer generational answers and solutions. Remember Joseph. You use the opportunity in such a way. That the people will say, this is a child of God that answered our question. Offered our solution. Change the, the situation in this land. Change the situation in this nation. 
Second, opportunities to be used to saturate your world with kingdom principles. Showing the world how to do things the kingdom way. To saturate the world, the earth, with kingdom principles and bring glory to God. This is how we do things. You literally use these opportunities to, 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 to disciple your world. To, 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 to demonstrate kingdom principles, kingdom principles, kingdom principles. This is the way to do things. This is how we do things. This is what I did to get here. Daniel literally saturated Babylon with the principles of God. Until the king said, let everybody worship the God of Daniel. Joseph almost taught Egypt how to tithe. Almost. Say, when the, your, 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 your ground produces the harvest, set so and so percentage apart, use this and so and so percent. If you remember many years ago, I taught the Joseph principle. And thirdly, opportunity is to be used to bring many unto salvation. Used to bring many unto salvation. That is, God has given you the platform to meet who you wouldn't have otherwise met. You use that opportunity to, 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 to talk to him about his soul. When you excel, people want to listen to you. And if they want to listen to you, then you tell them what matters to life. Am I communicating? When you are doing it well, whatever you say carries weight. It carries weight. It carries weight. There are those who speak, people hear. There are those, even their silence is, is weighty. So when God gives you the opportunity by excellence and gives you the platform, you use it to lead many to Christ. I, I heard of the footballer Kaka who played so much and he wore a, a, a t-shirt or a, a, under his jersey or something. Jesus saves, right? Or Jesus, Jesus, I belong to Jesus. That's right. And then after scoring a goal, after doing this or that, he will just remove the jersey so that you can know I belong to Jesus. I am in a football field that is filled with people who came only to be entertained. But if you like what I am doing and you, 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 you value me and, uh, and you are happy with me and you are my fan, I want to introduce you to who I belong. I want to introduce you to who I belong. I belong to Jesus. Opportunity is to be. And I, and I can tell you only eternity will reveal how many people belong to Jesus because they saw him. Because we live in a generation where everybody thinks that what a celebrity does is right. If he's wearing half short nicker, it is right. If it is doing this, it is right. But we need to do the things that are right in the right direction. He belongs to Jesus. And everybody, all right, if you belong to Jesus, I want to belong to Jesus. I think it is a cup they are holding there. And that cup came because I belong to to Jesus. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? The opportunity that your excellence is going to provide. The opportunity that your quality is going to produce. The awkward opportunity that your distinction is going to produce. That opportunity is to be utilized to bring multitudes to Jesus. That is why it is, it is important to go up. That is why you must refuse to be down. Because the number of people who will hear you when you are up are more than those who will hear you if you are down. Am I communicating? The number of people who will be convinced, who will be impacted, who will be influenced, who will be challenged and changed if you succeed. And if you are up there, they are more in number than the number of those who will hear anything you are saying if you are down. If you are down. We are all here now. What are you telling me? I'm the one to preach to you, sir. That will never be your portion. That will never be your portion. That will never be your portion. 
Lift your right hand and say, I am going up. Say it loud and say, I am going up. Say it loud and say, I am going up. No devil can keep me down. No power can keep me down. No force of hell can keep me down. Stand up on your feet and say it, I am going up. I am going up. No power can keep me down. No force of hell can keep me down. I am going up. Say after me, I am going to succeed. I am going to excel. I am going to succeed. I am going to be successful. Very, 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 very. Say that very seven times. Very, 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 very successful. I am going to be successful. I am going to excel. I am already succeeding. I am already excelling. Because I must impact my world. I must change my generation. I must touch lives for God. So I must do well. You know, there is nothing that drives pursuit like purpose. A sense of purpose drives pursuit. If you only want to succeed because you want to be like other people... That is a very, very little agenda. But if you want to be successful because you want to compel people to know God, if you want to be on top because you want to, you want to mark your generation, if you want to be up there because you want to speak and be heard, if you want to be up there because you want lives to be changed by your life, That is a purpose of heart that will drive your pursuit. I cannot be among those who are there to say, what is that one saying? No, no, I'm not that one. In in the world today, you have the best of them and the rest of them. Want to be excited that so-and-so person is in our midst, and so-and-so person is in our midst, and so-and-so person is in our midst. And the rest of you, you are all welcome. That's not your portion. I hear what I'm saying here. That is it's the same reason for conquering resources. Not just to get a car. Not just to get a house. But to use these resources to punish the devil. And to rescue, rescue lives. And rescue destinies. And change the stories of many around the world. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands today and just give him the praise. Now, the second thing that excellence will bring out, deal with that in the second service is called authority. Opportunity first, authority second, and prosperity third. We'll look at them in that order in the services. But right now, lift up your hands, your voices where you are, and let us worship him. Use the next three, four, five minutes and just appreciate him for his word to you and appreciate him because he's about to launch you into a world of excellence.
Father, for your presence here. Thank you, Father, for your presence here. Close your eyes if you can. Lift up your hands. Lift your hands high. Shato parata sita latarate. Shekoko bagalaga. Lift your hands high. He's passing by. Jesus is passing by. Standing very close to you. He's imparting and wearing on someone that spirit of excellence. Placing a seal on you. A seal that is taking you from the pit and taking you to the top. The embargo the devil placed on you and placed on your family and placed on your community that nobody important can come out. That nobody vital can come out. That nobody impactful can come out. That nobody can excel from that family, from that community. That embargo is lifted now. Lift your hands high. Mahashiva Gadaya. Mahashatakaya. Every embargo placed on your life, placed on your destiny. That no matter how hard you struggle, no matter how hard you try, you cannot excel. I am here to announce that embargo is lifted. Now, 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 now. I decree, I announce, I pronounce. The limit on excellence on your life is lifted right now. It's lifted right now. It's lifted right now. It's lifted right now. Shut up. Oh, your name is holy. I see full pledge restoration. The Lord is taking you back up where the enemy brought you down from. Liparada, the restoration of gifts and the restoration of potentials and the restoration of graces is taking you to where you belong, where you belong, where you belong, not the ground floor, but where you belong, where you belong, where you belong. Where you belong, where you belong, where you belong, where you belong, where you belong. Liberate Sata Lagadayada, Liberate Sita Laya, Liberate Sita Laya Bagarada. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus, lift your two hands and receive. A divine visitation encounter. Lift your hands high. I count up to three. You place the hand on your head and scream, I receive. It's a divine visitation encounter. Lift your hands high. Father, 
let it happen. That encounter that is pulling you out of the back to the throne, pulling you and crossing you over the river, over the valley, over the mountain. That encounter that is removing the yoke from off your shoulder. That encounter that is taking you to where you belong. At the count of three, you place the hand on your head and scream, I receive. Father, let it be now. In the name of Jesus. One. Two. Are you ready? Mahashada ya 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 Elike rata saka la torra toko soko peleta Elepe rata kasaka la terra daga bebeledi Lipe kete lipe rato soko palo terra daba Lift your hands and give him the praise. Going up to the high places to tear the devil's kingdom down. You do it for three minutes while that is happening. You got a healing here this morning. Quickly step forward on encounter. Someone came in here with pile. The Lord has healed you. Knee condition, God has healed you. And ear condition, hearing challenge. Also, God has healed you. You came in here this morning. And you are trusting God for something. You came with a weight that has been lifted. A demonic cloud just left somebody. A demonic presence just left somebody as well. You believe, you, you, you feel that something like that happened to you. And your experience is practical. You step forward and let's see what happened to you. Now give the Lord a loud shout of victory somebody. A loud shout of victory. The loudest shout. Go ahead. <laughs> 